officially declaring a national emergency. That all men are created equal. That NBA star Kobe Bryant was on board that helicopter and is now dead. itself hasn't really changed a whole lot except there's a lot more kids to keep caught up when they're gone but overall um, I teach the same stuff. I'm here with Mrs. Christensen and how is teaching during COVID-19? Um, I think I'm glad we're back in school. Um, during quarantine when we were teaching online was definitely uh, very difficult just because I missed having face-to-face -face interactions with students and I mean you guys know it was challenging to do all your work and make sure you're on track with everything so teaching now and being back in school is is awesome I think it's definitely still been a struggle um, with our limited time with classes only having a four-day week but I don't know, I feel like we're somewhat back to normal being able to teach in class and be with students every day. So for me personally, I think nothing much has changed since we've been back in school. It was more so during quarantine. First off, we didn't have get to have kids in the building all spring and that was awful. It was boring. This was just a big empty building and it needs kids in it. Secondly, we have to track any COVID cases that are reported in the school if they came to school with it. So we're doing that a lot. And we have lots of people that just stay home because they don't want to be here. And they say they have COVID, but they don't. All right, Mr. Silva, how has COVID-19 affected your teaching this year? Um, well, I've had students who've been absent. So um, and I've had to do a lot of makeup work for them. How did uh, COVID-19 affect teaching COVID-19 affected my teaching by hey. having to deal with kids being absent because they're out with COVID. And so having to do a lot of online work and stuff with them. Uh, as far as my in-class teaching goes, I don't, I don't teach anything different except for I have to speed things up a lot faster because we have less days. Mrs. Willis, how has COVID-19 affected your teaching? Um, we've had to cut a whole bunch of stuff that I usually like to do, and so I feel like we're just covering the hard stuff and not getting as much of the fun stuff. We would like to thank our teachers once again for being there for us this year and for making everything as normal as possible. We'd like to introduce some of them, Mr. Silva and Ms. Schaefer. <laughs> so, uh, we know since you're a new, st or a new student, a new, a, here, new student. new teacher here. New teacher here at Burley High day. School. We were Never, if we could. Always a student. Yeah, once a student, once, once a student, bobcat. Always a student. Once a always bobcat, always a bobcat. bobcat. I yeah, can't yeah. get away. <laughs> so we're wondering, since you're a, a new teacher, uh -huh. not a student, here yep. at Burley High School, if we could get to know a little bit about you. We sure. went to college. What are you teaching here? I'm an open book. All right. Go for it. I thought you were a student. Uh, you thought I was a student? You said you're an open book. I am an open book. <laughs> but you said you were a student. <laughs> I was a student. I'm always a student. You always got to keep learning no matter what. Uh, what do you want to know? That's what his about? power phrase. You always keep learning. You always keep learning. Right, class A? Everyone say C. 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 <laughs> uh, I don't know, like what, a little bit of background? Yeah, sure. Where'd you go to school? <laughs> so uh, well, I went to school here at high school. Mm -hmm. Graduated in 2014. Mm -hmm. uh, do it. Is it something? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, graduated 2014. I uh, went to school at BYU Idaho for a bit. Gross. Graduated. Well, <laughs> honestly, <laughs> yeah, it was iffy. But got out of there and uh, did you get married? Start going. To, nope. 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 Good. Single as a Pringle. Out of boy. Went to ISU for mm -hmm. grad school. I'm doing that right now. Doing Beautiful. a master's of education. Awesome. I graduated with political science and I took a lot of foreign language courses in Spanish. Beautiful. And I decided, you know what? I ain't want to be a lawyer because. I tried interning with them and it wasn't as fun as you think. So I decided, you know what, I, I love Spanish, let's just try teaching it. So I went to school for education, 
this job came up about first semester done, and well, who would have thunk it? Here I am. Beautiful. So, uh, like, what's a what's a hobby you like to do? What's something you like to do? Oh God, hobbies. Yeah, music. I love doing music. I play guitar, piano, drums. I sing. That's it. Uh, that's sing it. A <laughs> sing a song. What song? Um, Feliz Navidad. Feliz Navidad. Yeah. <laughs> Feliz Navidad. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, no, so I, I love music. I used to be in a band back in high school. Awesome. It wasn't that great, but what we was had a great time. What was it called? Chasing Angels. Early high school band. Actually Early high school, That's right. We played at the talent show. Chasing we played Angels. at graduation. We tried to have fun. Um, so music's always been a big hobby of mine. I was a big band nerd back in high school. I did jazz band, concert, marching, did drumline and all that. So, sweet. Yeah, band. always doing music. Finally, what what are you teaching here? I am teaching Espanol. <laughs> and that's Spanish, by yep, the way. That's Spanish, by the way, for all you people wondering. <laughs> um, I'm teaching these people. This is Spanish too, so we're going over more complicated stuff. Nice. But ultimately, what I teach in my classes is that I learned most of my Spanish through school, through personal study, through tutoring, and all sorts of stuff. The idea that you can't learn a language unless you go to that country is absolute bullcrap. You can always learn a language. You've just got to be willing enough to go out and try. Okay? Beautiful. And that's what we're all learning here today. Thank you. Thank man. you. Appreciate right. it. Bye -bye. Thank you very much. Tell us about your time in the National Guard. Time in the National Guard. Well, what do you want to know? You got to give me a little more to work on. Just give on. me a brief overview of your time there brief overview. Okay, so um, I left right after graduation to um, South Carolina I at Fort Jackson, spent 10 weeks there. Um, in that 10 weeks, I had one 10 minute phone call. So try living out with without your cell phones for 10 weeks. It's fun. Oof. Um, also, um, in my platoon of 63 females, about a third of them were still split offs. So in other words, they hadn't graduated high school yet. So that was fun too. So imagine your teacher training along right beside a bunch of high school students. Um, and then after that, I went on to um, Virginia at Fort Eustis for the next 17 weeks and was training to be a helicopter mechanic. While you were there, what was like your power phrase? Like what was motivating you to keep going? I don't know, it didn't necessarily have like a specific phrase. It was more along the lines of, yeah, it's not so bad. Just keep going. Breakfast is coming, or lunch is coming, or, or dinner is coming, or eh, I've got six more hours until breakfast. Oh. But food becomes very important when that's all you have to look forward to. But otherwise, it was just, you know, focusing on personal growth, just knowing every, even no matter how rough or bad it is in that moment, you're, you're growing and getting better. All right. Thank you, Ms. Schaefer. Hey. Burley BPA competed recently for districts. Uh, Burley High School had 34 students earn the right to advance the state. That's a lot of students. It is. Burley has really always had a strong program. We talked to Mrs. Cole about the competition and where the students go from here. Hey guys, we're here with Miss Cole and she's going to tell us a little, a little about what the students gain from joining BPA and what it's all about. Thanks for asking. I was just talking to some freshman students. We're working on career information. Some of them are interested in being entrepreneurs, and they're also interested in doing other business-related things. Um, so BPA gives people a chance to learn more about business, also graphic design, web design, programming, speaking. Um, oh gosh, we've got over 70 different events that kids can compete in. So it gives them a chance to go beyond what they can learn in the classroom, and um, they also get to have fun. So kids are what make it fun. That's awesome. We're so proud of all of our students that are in BPA.
Okay, we're here with Courtney. Can you explain to us what FFA Week is? Sure. So FFA is a national organization of youth-led leaders involved in agriculture, and FFA Week is just a week of appreciation for everything that FFA has done for us. Brooklyn, can you explain to us what activities happen during FFA Week? <laughs> Yes, so we're having a freshman breakfast uh, Wednesday the 24th um, for freshmen to get their green hand degrees and to have a competition of creed speaking. What are some more activities that happen during FFA week? So on Thursday the 25th, we do a driver tractor to school day in the morning. Then later on that day at lunch, we have a luncheon for all ag students so they can come out and have food. And then the teachers are invited this year and we invited some FFA advisors. And then there at the lunch, we will be selling our chapter sweaters for $30. Come have them. What do you like about FFA? Uh, the connections you make with people. Uh, the agricultural side of it. Opportunities that you get to go out and just learn things. Um, I love hanging out with different members, my FFA officer teams, the great. Good. The great best.